What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell and this is the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio by a very amazing friend of mine, Paul Janae. Paul, what is up, bro? How are you, man? Hey, Jay. Great to be here. Real privilege. Been looking forward to this. It's awesome to have you here. So let me give you guys his bio. So Paul is an attorney, is very, very influential in the medical space. He works with a lot of people that I've interviewed and spoken to over the last three or four years. Uh, He and I actually met for the first time in person uh, recently in Las Vegas at the A4M conference. And honestly, Paul has an illustrious career of working with a lot of amazing people. We're going to talk about a lot of the things that he is very skilled at on this podcast. But just so you guys have his bio, he actually is the founder and owner of Genetics Health Uh, And he's also, again, like I said, a prominent attorney. He's in Florida. But another cool part about him is he's literally a world champion powerlifter. And he's actually won the National Powerlifting Championship and was invited to compete in the World Powerlifting Championship back in 2000, in the early 2000s. So, again, he's a bro and also a very accomplished attorney. So, dude, it's an honor to have you on the show. But before we jump into the things we're going to talk about, um, as I always do on the Jay Campbell Podcast, how did Paul Janae get here talking to me today? Well, I, I think I was a, a, a follower, uh, not a worshiper yet, but a follower. Um, uh, You'll be the first worshiper, bro, but I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. All right, all right, all right. So, and I saw you at, uh, we had a, an A4M uh, cocktail mixer, which some of the pharmaceutical uh, companies have, and, yes. and I saw you there. And so I, I walked over, introduced myself. Um, and that's how we met and we started to talk and uh, there was a, a very immediate symbiosis, I think, I felt. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, actually, I was, it was, uh, um, you know, enlightening to have someone of similar mind, I guess is what we, what we call it uh, in, the, in the law. Are, are, you, uh, are you thinking and sharing the same thoughts without expressing them? Right. So I felt that kind of uh, kindred, uh, those kindred notions with you. Definitely. And we rapidly became friends and, and continued to communicate and set this up. And so that's how, that's how you and I met. My, my, uh, my foray, my entry into the pharmaceutical space, peptides and anti-aging uh, medications in particular, genetics health. Um, I, I had a meeting with another attorney on, on an unrelated, unrelated to peptide matter. It was another lawyer. And there was a group of guys there that owned a company called Vicrin. Now, Vicrin, V-I-C-R-I-N. Uh, used to be probably the largest distributor of IGF-1 uh, maybe five years ago in the country. Um, and the, the attorney, because of my appearance, uh, as underwhelming as to some that may seem, um, uh, uh, caused him to think I would be a good salesman for IGF-1. Now, I'm kind of a geek going back many years. I was a competitive bodybuilder uh, in the 80s before I went to law school. And so I, I became peripherally aware of IGF-1 many, many years ago. Sure. Um, as bodybuilders typically do. We'll become aware of drugs, veterinary or otherwise, <laughs> that, that everybody's asleep about, but right. we, we found to be right. um, uh, useful. Right. So the guy, the, this man approached me, and he was one of the owners of Vicrin. And so I rapidly became, the, long story short, rapidly became the number one salesman nationally. For Vicar and my part time, I have two full time businesses. Yep. Um, and eventually, I became the CEO of Vicar, and then eventually, Genetics Health acquired Vicar. So Vicar is has been acquired by Genetics Health, and we continue to sell uh, IGF one and a myriad of other peptides uh, as well. So that's why I got in this space probably five or six years ago. Although I've, I've had an interest in it for twenty five years. So it's become. Uh, an interesting um, vehicle to uh, it, it kind of meshes with my law practice and that my law practice is largely um, a healthcare related medical malpractice 
office, but I represent physicians in their personal matters. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, setting up clinics and so forth that I, I actually set up and founded my own uh, surgery practice called Active Orthopedics in Tampa some years ago and owned and operated. And that's a sore germ. That's, you have to get uh, uh, the uh, uh, ACA approval, um, which is the uh, uh, healthcare, the state healthcare licensing board. And they don't like to give healthcare licenses to non-physicians. Right. I was one of the few, and at the time, and still, I believe the only attorney who received ACA certification for a healthcare license. Wow. It took a year and a half to get it, but I wanted to have a medical business. Sure. Good, good chief, not a good Indian. So I started working for other doctors or doing their work for them. So I applied it to my own business model, which does, was to open a surgery practice. So I, I uh, had one of my uh, buddies who was an orthopedic surgeon go in as my partner, and we opened up Active Orthopedics. I owned and operated that for about four or five years and sold my interest to him. Uh, some time ago, but along the way, I had I had met a number of other physicians during that time. Uh, uh, healthcare reimbursements had gone down, sure. and the anti-aging space was really starting to uh, increase. Meaning, the number of doctors who wanted to become anti-aging specialists right. because of the revenue, the potential revenue stream, right. and their right. other revenue streams were drying up. So it just kind of. Uh, um, made it very easy for me to acquire doctors. Doctors are, are where I get my business from, Genetics Health. And we help physicians um, with their uh, protocols, their blood work protocols, and their application protocols of whatever peptide it is that they think they may want to use. We educate them. Uh, yeah. Um, we educate them on use um, and misuse and abuse. Paul, what do you really want to say? <laughs> I, I, I'm getting close to, to saying it. Um, there, there, <laughs> there's, there's a lot, look, there's a lot of, and you have them on your show, Jay, there's a lot of skilled labor in this yes. space. Yes. Physicians who were really dedicated themselves for a long, for a long period right. of time. Right. And no, before it had the name anti-aging clinic long right. before that. And right. these guys were great. They're actually the, the founders, if you're our founding fathers. Right. Exactly. And you had a number of them on your show. However, however, <laughs> there, there is, uh, the herd exists, Paul. There's, yes. The, the sheeple are not, sheeple have MDs and DOs after their name too. <laughs> so we try, it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And we, but uh, it's a very uh, lucrative challenge for you and rewarding industry because uh, what, was, what was the statement for P.T. Barnum? For every, fool, for every fool who goes wise to the ways of the world, three suckers are born a minute. Is that what he said? Yeah, or, or something like that. I, th I think he did. Um, uh, well, and also, what was it? Speaking of people uh, who who said uh, things that are quotable right now, uh, and I recently, and it's uh, applicable to this, is that uh, we don't know one millionth of one percent of anything. And exactly. Uh, Thomas Edison said that. Yes. So true. That's that's applicable to what you and I are talking about. Whether it's P.T. Barnum or Thomas Edison, both knew yeah. that um, there's a large amount of the population. Uh, that, that not clued in. That are yeah, not clued in. We're being polite, you and I. Boy, they should have heard us before the show. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Paul. The show is just getting started. It'll right. come out. I'm going to bring right. it out of you. Okay, so all that said, amazing. You have a very lucrative career because clearly a lot of doctors have absolutely no idea what they're doing. I mean, yesterday, you know, I did a live webinar with four of the top female doctors in the world and my wife. And, you know, Dr. Erica Schwartz from New York City, you know, famous, literally Five, four or five time New York Times bestselling, you know, authors straight up said that most doctors will kill you. She's like, literally, they will kill you, you know, if you are not self-aware and do your own work and come in there wanting to want. So again, we know that, you know that. I mean, that's, that's John where Hopkins, at. Johns Hopkins commissioned a research panel, right. uh, Johns Hopkins University. And then I think this was 2016 or 17. And, and this, this was startling for me. I got it in a little... Uh, email that I get from the trial lawyers association sure. and the third leading cause of death doctors. in the country is medical errors. Exactly. Doctors. Third, 251,000 people died. They went into the hospital. They didn't get out of the hospital. Medical errors. The first leading cause of death is, of course, is uh, heart disease. Right. The second is cancer and it's various right. forms. And the third 
our doc is me- medical yeah. errors. Wow. I know. It exceeds I know. accidents and drug overdoses and murder. I know. It's the third leading cause. So that's. More, really- by the way, if more people knew that, it would go down because so many people would not trust. But my doctor said so. Yeah. 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 They, yes. Uh, or they, they don't live to tell the tale. That's so, absolutely uh, true. And as an attorney that handles those kind of cases, um, that's the cause of death. That's a quarter of a million people a year, 700 Insane. a day. Insane. Um, but I, I do injuries that result from medical negligence too. It's right. not just death. I mean, right. I, don't, I, exactly. I don't know what the number would be. Right. You lose a leg, you lose ability to see, hear, think. Right. right. So it's, uh, uh, if people knew, as you said, uh, just exactly really what go what goes on. And, and I mean, doctors are just people. Yeah, they are. It's a practice because they're practicing. <laughs> well, I'm a practicing lawyer too, so. Uh, yeah, I'm still practicing, uh, but I haven't gotten it right by any means. By the way, I am not a doctor. When I say we help doctors, I have a medical staff here. Of course. And we do protocols and I, I'm not a doctor. I don't, I don't pretend to be, yep. uh, don't, don't want to be. Well, everybody knows who watches my show, Paul, that I'm a Google doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You mean you're not a, what's a Google doctor? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's, let's talk about, cause I, there's so much I can talk to you about. Um, and yes, everybody knows now that we're very kindred spirits, but so the whole age management, anti-aging, as you said, it's, it's taken off. You kind of were really at the beginning. You've been literally helping docs, advising them, setting up clinics, doing all the things that they have to quote unquote do to get, you know, off of the tit of sick care into cash pay optimization stuff. What, you know, what do you see right now? Like we're obviously in 2020 right now, this podcast, it's it's February. This podcast will probably run in the end of March or early April. I don't know. But um, what do you see right now as the biggest issue for doctors still attached again to the tit of sick care insurance, getting into optimization healthcare where it's cash pay? What is the biggest obstacle? And again, as you know, a lot of docs watch the show. So this is a good answer. It's going to be good for them. Well, I I think the, the, there's two uh, I was, that I see. Two is the um, unwillingness of their of the AMA or those entities that have been that the doctor's been so connected to, right? Um, for 20 years or 15 years or 30 right. years, however right. long they've been practicing. Sure. A lot of sure. these are older guys that are just tired. Right. I was just going to ask you that. A lot of people that are detaching are the older people who are like, "Fuck this! I can't do this anymore." Yeah, I'm not helping anybody. Exactly. Um, and, and so that's number one, this, this attachment to the boss. Right, exactly. And, 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 and reciprocally, the boss's uh, disdain for the kind of things that you and I talk about and deal with on a regular basis. Right. I mean, it's completely, if not, it's utterly rejected. Exactly. Like a lot of testosterone optimization. That's, Jake, that should be standard of care. Exactly. Yeah, as for any man 30 exactly. or 35 years of age or over should be uh, t- 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 Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, by the way, let me ask you something on that. And you're a good guy to answer this. Like, what do you think right now the percentage of men who literally don't even know that they should even have their testosterone checked again over the age of 35? What do you think the percentage of men in America right now is? Just your opinion. Uh... Well, I, 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 how about this? How about my, my thinking is that probably less than 5% are aware of it. Exactly. So you have, and why, why such, why 90, 95% are unaware of it? Because their doctors, we're talking about them. Exactly. Again, are not, are not looking at, at that yes. as the ideology of a problem. Right. So right. And, and as a matter of fact, they look at the, the, the use of testosterone replacement as a, itself a problem. Exactly. And there's this misconception about heart disease being associated with testosterone therapy or prostate issues. When was the last time you saw a 19 year old with prostate cancer? Dude, the it's reason a- they don't no, yeah. is because their testosterone levels are 14. Exactly. Exactly. So maybe, well, that was 30 years ago, bro. Don't talk about today's youth. I think you got a trip. You got a, a third of that is probably where they're at at 19, but yeah, I get your point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking. <laughs> Uh, no, but so, your point is well taken. Absolutely. So the second, the second thing is AMA, uh, the AMA DIN is the number one reason doctors don't, don't get into this space. 
<clears throat> and number two is is monetary. It's a cash business. Most right. insurance companies don't cover, so they have to make this quantum financial decision. <laughs> you know, they get a red, they get their bill paid for by Medicare or the insurance company. Or they got to pay their own. Oh, this is a big. This is doctors don't like that. Doctors don't like that. Uh, doctors are not taught this at all. As a matter of <laughs> fact, a lot of doctors when they get out of law school, they have four hundred thousand dollars in debt. They don't want to pay that. Exactly, dude. So there's these various forgiveness programs. So do doctors have this um, fear. Right. Fear. And fear, of course, is uh, the mother of all uh, uh, human limitation. Yes. In my, in my, in my No, no, absolutely true. I agree. That's well said. By the way, I would have not said human li limitation. I would have said control structures, but that is a really good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to keep people in, in the, in the, yeah. I got I'm it. I'm trying to keep people I, in the podcast so far. I got it. So th th those are the two um, uh, factors that militate against guys getting into a pr practice that would productively, that would help their patients. Right, right. Uh, uh, the AMA din over control over them and yep. their loyalty misplaced as it is. Yep. And then the monetary consideration. I mean, I've set these practices up. As I, I told you before, I've set up my own surgical practice. And it's inordinately, and that was a cash business. Of course. It's inordinately expensive and time consuming to do. Sure, sure. So m many are just not, unless they're willing to make that turn. Right. Unless they're, they're fully um, uh, conscious guys. Right, exactly. I'm stealing one of your terms. Right. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard for them to let go because they'll do both. And that, that's the part that scares me is the doing both. Well, as you know, and you and I have talked about this off air, I've never really shared this on a podcast, but you're the right guy to share it with. In my two business relationships with physicians, two very famous physicians, by the way, um, without like sullying anyone, they did not end well. <laughs> and because as you said, you know, they were attempting to be business people and not doctors. And there is a line oh. Whoa. A very separating line between the two. And as you know, and you work with probably a lot of them, but the best doctors also are the most amazing business people once they unattach from the tit. Now, again, there's a lot of doctors that can't literally, as I say, run a taco stand in East Los Angeles. But there are many doctors who literally are really good at what they do and they figure out automation and all the things that you teach and blah, 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 blah. And they become good at it. But Yes, it's very difficult to take a person that, saying all the things, the two things, the one and two, the fear, and then also the tit of the AMA and make them an entrepreneur. Yeah. It, it's a mindset shift beyond actually, as you said, the expensive idea and, and physicality of actually doing it. It's also like, oh my God, I, I have to be a responsible, good paying, you know, pay my bill human. <laughs> I, I need to produce results. <laughs> There's the big, the big hurdle. I need to actually make people well oh, because shit, they're not going to come back with their, with their cash unless they're markedly feeling better. Now, that's not the case. Dude, that's amazing that you just said that. Think about oh, that for oh. a second. I have to make people feel well. I mean, dude, that's like one of the most profound points ever on my podcast because you're right. If you're not a fucking – you're a sick care doctor – it doesn't matter. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, there's the development of more drugs for things you fucked up. Dude, that so is if, if, if you screw the pooch on some uh, model of care for your patient, they're always developing other drugs. Dude, to think about them. that. Yes. Fix yes. the ones that you, so it's a self-perpetuating model. Wow, bro. It's not, it's not meant to be <sighs> declining in, in the issuance of prescriptions and uh, radiology. It's meant to increase. Yes. The, those needs. So Paul, let me ask you something about that. Cause again, that's so profound. My head is spinning right now. I've never really even thought of it in that well, but like, is it ever going to end? Do you see sick care of, of being eradicated and just imploding? Um, I, I think I see how it can. Okay. I mean, you have to have the answer literally is no, but what I'm saying is I, 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 I you can see how it can if you're, yeah. If you're knee deep, in, you can't. If you're not knee deep in this space, sure, sure. You, you only, um, you know, you're, you you only know in your life what you experience, right? The, the most. I mean, right. if you you're really not sure about other things in life unless you've experienced them. You yeah, absolutely. Get, it's anecdotal. It's what another right. guy did. Right. But if you did it yourself, if you experienced it yourself, um, 
setting up clinics and working with doctors and there is hope, but it's going to take, um, it's going to take a lot of guys, um, to, to, to ch it's going to have to start in medical school. Right. There's going to have to be some curricula. Right. And th this is the part where. You know, so so you're to... saying it has to be a separate system. So the, 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 the bad system of course, of course. will always be there for those people, but somebody has to architect literally a new earth, new system of optimization healthcare, where you said the, the intention is actually well-being and optimization. That's right. I mean, it has to it has to start all over again, and maybe they'll they'll be parallel tracks, the the good guys and the bad guys for. No, I mean that's dude, that's brilliant. I mean that's what you know. A lot of these people that talk about architecting the new earth is that there's a bifurcation. There's the people attached to the old antiquated failed systems because they don't know any better, and as you said, they won't change their pattern of thought. And then there's people like you and me who knew from the beginning, because we're lucky, we've you know, had great mentors and like you, you know, both of us come from the bodybuilding world. So we know what works and what doesn't. So we don't, we never were misled, but we do because of our, you know, our upbringing and our mentorship and stuff like that, we do know. So it's like taking people like us and training an entire fucking new system. It's literally from entropy comes creation. Yeah, there's gonna have to be uh, at the very beginning, some, I don't wanna call it an indoctrination, but uh, there has to be some uh, teaching, uh, right? Exactly. A, a model or pattern or that uh, gives uh, the reality of options. Um, right. Doctors right. are only good as their options. Right. And if if they're taught in orthopedics a narrow option. Right. Right. See, right. there's some kind of physical therapy that is their surgery. I mean, there's right now there's there's so right. I mean they're, they're dabbling with stem cell. Right. Some of that is BBC. Right. Yeah. Some of that is, is uh, endless hilarity uh, to watch some of these untrained guys put needles with, with stem cell in it. And even the formulary for the stem cell itself. Um, right. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I also it. think I'm, I'm just thinking out loud of what you said, cause you triggered a thought. I'm thinking of a podiatrist in Oklahoma doing a pellet insertion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, you, you took me there. You no, know, I, I did. I, but <laughs> the, the minute you said podiatry, I should have known this was probably going to go down. Uh, probably not be a good medical anecdote. Oh, God. What, what did what this one physician tell me? He was a, a cardiologist, an expert in a malpractice case I had. And there were two components to this case. One was it had a circulatory issue, and my, my guy lost one of his feet. Unnecessarily, a podiatrist was one of the defendants. And uh, my, my cardiology expert said, well, um, it's, it's the same thing in, in law. Family law lawyers are the podiatrists of the medical. Right. He made the, the analogy to me, you know, family law lawyers, you know, and we have podiatrists. So they're, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying that was said to me. Don't misunderstand. No, I, I, it's awesome. I, I want people out there to misunderstand. It's a very good analogy. Uh, that, that's the analogy he used with podiatrists. And that's the only podiatry analogy I have, so I'm using it now. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, you don't want to see. Yeah. Okay. Well, so these guys are educated. There's a formulary that's used to set them on a path. When right. They're in medical school, when they get out, their yep. residency. Yep. And uh, they they follow it. I mean, yep. it, it's it, there's a there's an avenue to make a lot of money. Yeah. Regardless of outcome. See, I'm a, I don't, this is what, why I'm turning red right now. Sure. Because for 32 years, I've been a contingency fee attorney. Right. I don't, I don't get paid in, unless I get a recovery, unless it's the only type of attorney, right. a contingency attorney. Sure. That does, I don't, I can't pay a bill. Yeah, exactly. Unless, unless I've done a good job, unless I've recovered money either by verdict or settlement for a client. Sure. So when there's a profession that's not like that, Right. That gets a recovery regardless of outcome. Right. Guys like me yeah. question um, uh, the, the, the commitment to outcome. Right. And that, look, most doctors are committed to outcome. Sure. Surgeons, general practitioners. Right. Most, surprisingly, I'm going to say most of these guys are great guys. A lot of them are my friends. Yeah. Really, they really are good 
people. They I think they all start altruistically, but then the system, as you know, is so demonic and so flawed and failed that they just eventually just become an extension of the system, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, they're also very good legislators. Um, right. Like in Florida, we have a medical malpractice act, which is a minefield for people who want to, we talked about this before the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the third leading cause of death in the, in, right. in the country is medical errors. And there's a, you're greatly limited in Florida in pursuing a medical negligence came. There's right. It's the same theory. way, by the way, in Cali. Same shit yeah. in Cali. And most states have a, a statute that governs uh, all medical malpractice uh, claims. Right. Yep. And so there's very few guys doing it, really, that right. are litigating and or trying medical negligence cases. Sure. sure. And that's a shame because it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's, well, it's not really a shame. I, I, I you know. Uh, fortunately, you know. I know exactly what you're saying and I'm in total agreement, but I mean, well, I mean, you know, just personally, I'll share Monica's mom, you know, again, and that whole baby boomer generation is all like the, you know, the doctor's God. And so she had a polyp and, you know, in a colonoscopy and, you know, she had to have it removed, even though she shouldn't have it removed. Well, anyway, fast forward, she died, sepsis, you already know all that stuff. And you know, her sister, one of her sisters is, you know, a, a victim type. And she's like, we're going to sue. And so, you know, we had to meet with an attorney, everyone in the family. And we sat down and after, you know, he was a great attorney. And after he explained everything to us and, you know, all the things they do, they attached you, they put liens on every person. I mean, dude, California is the worst. And then they literally tell you, and oh, by the way, the maximum recovery, if three years later, is $250,000. And we're all like, what the fuck? I just wasted 60 minutes of a fucking my life, you know, getting all of that, right? So you're right. I, I'm totally with that. And again, and I always say this, just to add this, because it's so amazing. And again, you work in this shit every day, dude. The guy told us, and again, this is four years ago, I learned this, but 50% of any person in the United States in all Western hospitals or hospitalization, even emergency outpatient centers, critical care, if you have an invasive procedure over the age of 65, it's a 50% chance of post-surgical infection. And then you already know what happens after that. Yeah. The, the incidence of, yeah, I don't know. And it, 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 <laughs> where the, uh, yeah. Um, so it, it, look, here, here's a little, uh, I always try and make whatever it is I'm talking about relative to my own experience. Sure. So I've had multiple, as a result of powerlifting, I've been a heavy powerlifting for 48 years. I started when I was 15 years old, and I was in my first competition when I was 17. So I've been <laughs> lifting heavy weights. Under some heavy, heavy iron at points in your yeah, life. Yeah, some heavy shit. Uh, there was, uh, in the early 80s, there was only three guys in the 242-pound weight class that could bench press raw 600 pounds. I was one of them. That's amazing. And we would trade back and forth with who was the national, who was the right. national. And so uh, over that, this time, I also squatted heavy and deadlifted and competed in the worlds. And over that time, I tore myself up, completely evolved, detached, sure. uh, my bicep, my right lat, completely torn out of the, right, out of, out of my right armpit, um, graphic visual injury. Sure. But I, had, yeah. I had a boo-boo, see? No, you, they're bad. So, but I never, because of what I did professionally, yeah, I know you got a lot of those guys on your, on your Fuck. Can you see the thing? I'm, I almost had a thing. I had a, an ingrown hair, Jay. No, fuck. I mean, I feel no, you, bro. You that, know that, what pain is. You literally know what physiological. Well, is. yeah. It, it wasn't the pain. It was. I never had. I've never had surgery. And the reason is because of my profession. The I show mean, is all I, you need to know as to why Paul Janay is not gone under the knife. That's right, and particularly now with. After this podcast and my reputation with doctors, no I'm, one will I'm, ever I'm watch really this not podcast. going to the hospital around here. I got to go to Bermuda to get, you know, something worked on. I'm out. I can't, I can't do this right now. Don't worry, but I never both of us will go. Unless we're shot by a machine gun and we're bleeding out. I've beaten both of us. What are we going to go for? Yeah. And in that case, I'll probably call one of my doctors to come over and help me Exactly. Out. You, you don't have a doctor? I got about 50 fucking 500 yeah, yeah. in my phone on speed dial. So I'll pick one when I need one. Yeah. That's right. So I don't, so if that's not testimony to my, to my concern about uh, 
uh, you know, what happens in third hospital. leading cause of extinction. Yeah, from I'm this not point. going. I don't care. I got a malformed bicep. It's like exactly. a, a coffee table book. It's a discussion thing. I have a strong mind. I'll heal that shit on my own. Thank you very much. I did that in 2001, yeah. by the way, Jay, and won the world championships two more years. That's awesome. Man. Completely torn off bicep. So you can do it. There's yeah. other ways that you can self treat. I don't rec obviously I don't recommend that in a, in a bad, uh, in a bad situation. You get hit by a car, you get run over by a car. Hey, there's, right. you know, I, I can't move my legs. I think I'll self treat. No, exactly. But unless it's life or death, I, I guess is what I'm, I'm saying. totally with you, dude. Uh, you're not going to see me in an emergency. Never. I'm, Never. I'm my kid, by the way, you know, it's funny that you're saying this. So my kids 12 and 10 unvaccinated, don't go to the doctor. Don't go to hospitals. Got tons of family members that are physicians. Obviously, you know, through my work and all that, I have so many doctors and friends. You know, I, I, my actual, you know, sister is a pediatrician, very successful. She's in Clearwater. And whenever they get a sniffle, and, you know, she's in Vegas, thank God, I told you. But, you know, she, we're going to call that. No, they're fine. They don't get sick. You're, you're right, dude. I mean, the reality is that we've created a society. And again, thankfully, it's stopping now. A lot of people, younger people are much more aware, thankfully. But so. they just want to run to the allopathic God with the lab coat and, you know, seek validation. Yeah. And as you and I both know, there is no validation coming. What are they going to do that you and I can't already do ourselves? You know, give them whatever, you know, mucus, mucinic, mucinix or whatever, you know, they got a cold, a cough, they got a sinus infection, a sniffle, whatever. What are they going to do, Paul? Yeah. Well, that, well, they, the, <laughs> there's no money. There's no money in doing something other than what they're doing. There's, there's no, look, they have to pay bills too, right? I know, dude. That's what I always say. I get it. People look at my profession and say, this guy's talking about doctors being crooks. I mean, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm going to get email. I, I'm, I'm ready yeah. for it. Yep. yep. But I don't, in my profession, I don't get paid. Exactly. Unless my client is satisfied with the outcome. Unless someone else, my client, is satisfied yeah. with my work. Right, exactly. Such that they're willing to, to settle. So yep. that's not the case uh, with, uh, I, uh, I don't know any professions that outcome governs your, your income. I know, dude. The outcome of what you're doing is how you, I don't, I don't know who else offers that. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch topics on you, not to switch because I think we've covered a lot and we're, you know, I, I want this to be solution based for you too because I want you to get a bunch of docs, reach out to you because Rick Collins is a good friend of mine and he won't come on and talk about this, but you will. Well, so, let's hear it. So, yeah, he's like, Jay, how do you know I'm going to say yes? No, I, I want to talk about, pep <laughs> I want to talk about peptides. You know, let's, let's be realistic. And both of us know that there are a lot of doctors out there that are walking this path now. And thank God, you know, we obviously are open about optimization, healthcare options, but also, as you know, some of them are unfortunately recommending research chemical companies to their clients. And, you know, I want you just to kind of go on if you're okay and feel comfortable with it. I want you to kind of go on the record and say uh, why that's probably not a very smart thing to do. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously Yes, I agree with that. And Did I throw I, you a big enough softball? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a uh, that's an easy one. Um, and I, I'm so, we I I used to have a lot of the physicians I work with now do that. Um, and the problem is, well, I mean, initially is sterility and, and what you're what's what's in that vial that that you just that you just bought that little vial that has this white lifelized powder you're supposed to reconstitute. What is it exactly? Is it HCG? Is it aspirin? Right. Is it, is it, is it uh, chalk? Is, is it, you know, what is it? How, and how are you going to know if you're a newbie who has nothing to compare it to? And that's what a lot of these right. guys know better. Yeah. Right. So, and you can get, you can get these compound peptides, um, which are just chain, various links in a chain of amino acids. Exactly. It's not, it's not exactly the most difficult thing to manufacture. Right. So I don't get saving a couple hundred bucks because there's plenty of doctors that will prescribe this stuff. U S made U S pharmacies. There's plenty of pharmacies that do. Sure. It. Sure. <clears throat> so I don't get it. I don't get uh, the, the referral to uh, entities that may not be, you may not be getting at all what it is you want. You have purity issues. You have, uh, dosing problems, you have uh, 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 a lack of 
look, if you don't, if you haven't gone to a doctor and you haven't gotten, I'll start at the beginning and you haven't gotten blood tests and you don't know what's going on inside, what right. are you fixing? Exactly. How are you going to compare it after 30 or 60 days of use to what? What's your baseline? Right. Your mind? I right. just, well, you know, right. I, I, right. I, I feel better. You know, I have, I grew some hair in my ear, so I know something's working. Right. It's not the basis. For well, well, listen, you know this, and I'm gonna, I want your answer on this. I mean, the majority of people today get their information about peptides literally from guys like me. That's, you know, other than the bro hey. science boards, other than the bro science boards that you and I were reading, you know, 20 plus years ago with guys like you and me who were actually using these things and smart about their usage and learning again through trial and error. Nowadays, as you said already at the beginning of part of the show, and as we've talked off air a million times in our conversations via text, you know, these guys, young doctors are literally watching my podcast, Ben Greenfield's podcast, Dave Palumbo's podcast. I can go on. There's many getting their information. And it's like, they don't even have, as you said already, the first basis of understanding. They've never done this themselves. They don't understand, as you said, lifealized powder reconstitution. I mean, dude, you already know. I mean, like literally I'm at TaylorMade and I can't remember and Wells booth and I, all these doctors, I'm just observing you know, my wife is signing her book and I'm observing and they literally are walking up asking questions that a first grader would ask. Yeah. Well, that, uh, but fortunately, uh, fortunately they were at the A4M. Don't you know? <laughs> so uh, the, the learning curve at least started somewhere for these right. guys. Right. There's, 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 there's so many more and so many others that are not even members of right. that society. Right. Um, so I, I don't know what the, th to answer your question, I don't know what the thinking is there. Um, yeah. but, I, but I think it's a revenue stream thing. Reimbursements have gone down. So you have a lot of these young guys, young clinicians right. who are just starting out. They have debt, they have bills and they're looking for a lot of debt. So, it's a lot of debt. So they're looking for a, 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 a mechanism yeah. to bring in some, some commerce. Yeah. Um, and other beyond that, it, it may just be foolishness to them to learn anything beyond what you tell them or what they call genetics about, or yeah. it's a way it's, a, it, they have too many other things. And that's why I, I worry about the guys that do both because they yeah. don't take the time, right? They're not going to, to, to take the time, uh, to, to learn this science. Yeah. A lot of it's very dynamic, as you know. Of course. Tomorrow, oh. something could change. I mean, what is there, 7,000 peptides? Yeah, it's insane. I mean, I'm literally writing a book on them right now, and, you know, I'm spending like four hours every day. The goal is we're doing a big podcast, Ben Greenfield and I, and, and Ryan Smith, and uh, Nick and Andrews, my business partner, is one of the top, you know, biochemist or uh, biochemical engineers by April 14th. And so I want to get the book out. And again, obviously, there's so many. But, you know, we're focusing on the ones that can people you can use right now and that have an impact both clinically and also from a science base. You know, there's actually human research. Um, but, yeah, dude, I mean, it's like, it, it, you know, you, you and I have talked about this too, but, like, you can't even almost write a book now without understanding that it's completely obsolesced in six months. Yeah. That's the rate and speed right now of new awareness and expansion in theory and obviously understanding so it's like, you can't, you just have to know that if you're putting something out, you almost have to put it online and you have to tell people like, Hey man, if you buy my book or buy my research, you get up lifetime updates for whatever we do. Right. Because again, it's changing so rapidly. Isn't, isn't that part of your answer right there, Jay, these young guys, it's such a dynamic, it's, it's yeah. not a model that's existed for 150 years exactly. that they can learn exactly. in medical school and follow. Exactly. It's not going to change. It's in transgen, maybe some new right. medication. But the, 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 the practice model is right. pretty much the same clinic to clinic. What yep. we're talking about is, is dynamic. It, yep. it changes all the time. Yep. You may get an update, uh, an FDA update, hey, take that off the market. Right. That happened with the GHRP, two and six, right. recently, yeah. the last yeah. year. Yep. Big spellers, gone. They're not approved. Right. Yet. Yeah. So that happens in peptide space all the time. So maybe, you know, just maybe, these young guys are finished with their learning part of their life in school right. and academics right. and now they're in the practice uh, part of their life and less likely um, as young guys to want to learn this stuff. I see a lot of the older guys are the yeah. ones that want to, if you go to the lectures at A4M, I mean, the room is filled with guys that are, you know, over 50. Seniors. Uh, yeah. 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 So 
I don't know about the young guys. Um, so what would you offer advice right now from, you know, again, as you know, I have a ton of clinicians that watch this podcast. So what would your best advice right now, just instructional stuff be of what to do if they're, you know, getting into the cash pay world of things or are they already in cash pay? Maybe again, this kind of wide diverse answer from you, but you know, one or two things that they should do. And then maybe one thing that they absolutely should avoid. Okay. Well, they should know their marketplace. Where in the country are you? Right. Are you in Idaho where you have six people that are going to show up to your new clinic? Are you in Southern California, which right. is inundated? Know your marketplace. Ants. Yeah. So, it, it, so once that's satisfied, you have, you've done some demographics, you got to do some homework. You know, you just can't, you know, show up on a street corner right. like so many are right now. Drive down the street. Right. Uh, any aging this guy. Uh, we right. can help with your erection. Right. We, which, thank God, there's a billboard every minute for me to see that there. Thank God, you know, that they've discovered the, the, something there. Right. Um, boy, don't they tell you about it. Because every <laughs> sign, now, now cosmetic guys are erection guys. Uh, who knew? Who knew men were having, you know, I didn't know till like the last five years. Right. So know, know your market where you are. Do the demographics. Can, can, do you have a population that will support this practice? Yep. Okay. And know what you're going to sell. What are you going to be uh, advising patients to take? You know now, everything from Celebrex to Viagra. Okay, right. you, you have that model. Right. But this is completely different. So you have to know what it is you're selling so you can talk with, with a fair amount of intellectual capacity to your patients. So they're confident that what you're doing um, is what they need. Okay, so let's expand on that. Again, this is good. So telemedicine, just a little bit of commentary from you on telemedicine. Like, should a new doctor, again, relatively maybe a couple of years now in cash pay, should they consider expanding and getting their licenses in multiple states? And then, you know, there's obviously a lot of nebulous aspects of compounding pharmacy and shipping medications from state to state. So what is your advice on telemedicine? Um, I think... I think they have to look at it because if they're, look, a website is not just to your geographic area. If you're publishing a website like yours or mine, right. it's, na it's national. Everybody sees Everywhere. it. It's global. So, yeah. so we have physicians who are prescribing uh, right now. I think we have physicians in nine states, genetics health, right. uh, who ask us for medication sure. or ask us to help with their medication. Right. Um, so if you're, uh, a physician who's looking into this, you have, you have to examine telemedicine for that reason, because you're going to someone, you could be in Southern California right? and someone from Baltimore could call you. Yeah, exactly. And what if it's a clinic in Baltimore right? that could be lucrative for, for you? Exactly. You have to be able to access, or those patients have to be able to access you and they're not going to get on a plane. Sure. And, sure. and fly to Southern California. Of so course. The answer is, Yes, I think that telemedicine. I think it's 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 right with abuse. Yeah, uh, because oh god, yeah. And, <laughs> That's and, so funny you said that because I wasn't even going to go down that path. But I mean, yeah, I mean the people that have been practicing it have definitely been practicing it illegally, without any chast you know judgment of that. But you're right. I mean, and as you said, you know, the AMA and all the other alphabet soup agencies that govern medicine. They make it so difficult anyway. It's so nebulous. You've got state to state. You've got, you know, compounding pharmacy, shipping medications across state lines. Right. It's insanity, dude. You have to make sure that the, this is another little piece. There's lots of pieces. There's no yeah. one. It's a, any business. You have to put together the pieces carefully for it to sure. be successful. You sure. can slap together some bullshit and, and be, oh, forgive me. I don't know what we're allowed to do. Uh, yeah. Allowed to say. Um, you but, say anything on this show, Paul. Well, well, you just, just <laughs> loosen the shackles a little until bit. Until you do, I had no idea. It. We're good. Okay, <laughs> until my little picture in that, that box goes off. Until no, until it goes live, and then YouTube says click. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's a whole other thing. Um, so <laughs> you have to be, uh, you have to look at it as the answer to that. Yes, but it, it's really being abused, uh, and it, it can be, um, it can be abused by smart guys yeah but um, do you see your business evolving to the point where literally like the majority of stuff you're going to be doing is like handling um telemedicine issues 
Yeah. Probably, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm getting kind of long in the tooth. I'm 62 sure. years old. Yeah. So hopefully the Grim Reaper will come get me before that. <laughs> so I don't, I don't need both, bro. I don't have to deal with, you know, I, I, there's a better place, you know, it ain't, it ain't here in this office. <laughs> so, <laughs> for, yeah, for, you know, I, 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 I'm already convinced. That was the best that. statement on the show right there, by the way. So, Can I spotlight that? Yeah, sure. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you can use the forward in your new book. Um, so, yeah, telemedicine is a, it's a new frontier. It's subject to abuse, not, although not necessarily. Yeah. Um, and that, that's a, look, I thought, it's a whole educational curve, telemedicine. Yeah. How do you utilize it? With my business model, genetics, I, I plug myself into a unique little space. I'll tell you where genetics health is. When a doctor, these doctors were talking about yeah. who are uh, trying. Yeah, that's the best word. Ooh, they're trying. Not so, doing, okay. trying. Not, no, no, you. Well, that's that's Jay Campbell. I'm saying they're trying, and they 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 you know they they willy willy want to do it. Right. But they don't know. They don't have the mechanism yeah. to plug this uh, peptide anti aging piece into their yeah. business. Yeah. And they don't know anything about blood laboratory, what's necessary, what they should be looking at or looking for. Right. They don't know about dosing protocol. By the way, is this, I'm asking you, and it's your opinion, and you're very successful in what you do. Is this under 90% of the doctor population or over 90% of the doctor population? That's a trick question, Jay. I know your trick question. That, that's, that's, uh, I'm trying yeah. to get you customers splash uh, but, but believe, me, believe me, it's not the way I want to get them. <laughs> You know, you don't, you don't call a future customer an idiot. Uh, just, just I've experienced. Not until that. they're actually paying you, Paul, or you've actually won. Well, like I said, it, I don't get paid. It's, it's the end. That's what I'm saying. Until you've actually won victory for them, then you can let them know. Yeah, as soon as they leave, I talk to my staff about that. <laughs> so, um, oh, shit. yes, ninety percent. Oh, absolutely, because this is becoming the new frontier. Yeah. Gratefully so. Yeah, you know, it is good, actually. But any new frontier is going to be wrought with, you know, stinkers and, and speed bumps. and, and as, as the special forces of our beautiful country, and you know many of them as I do, say, if you're not situationally aware, you get what you deserve. So, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, but I, I think that, um, yeah, most of them are, are trying Right. Uh, and uh, they, they're not, they, they need, uh, they need an, an education, but that, that's not unique to any profession. You yeah. need to be educated in what you're doing. Uh, so we didn't really, talk, we didn't, by the way, we didn't really talk about diet and exercise, but did you want to throw in any couple, you know, points on that before I say like, how can, you know, somebody who's watching, because again, there's going to be a lot of docs are going to watch this and be like, I need to get him in my phone. Well, this is what's going to happen. I, I, I'm, I'm prognosticating. Um, I'm going to get, uh, reach, uh, doctors are going to reach out to me because they have a uh, a a personal professional problem. Do you handle this? Do you handle exactly. that? Which yeah. I do. Yes. So that's 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 really how I I got a foothold in into all these physicians that I represent is because I handled their which I'm happy to do. Right. Their personal business, corporate business, everything from policy and procedure manuals to the right way to fire someone who needs to go and by the way in california that is a very complicated process yeah I, that's why I, I mentioned it i just got off the phone with a guy and this <laughs> he, this guy this guy had no he was about to do something that you would probably be reading about right just right. bad um, yeah. it, it made sense right but right right not not don't do that <laughs> let me advise you on not doing that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. before you before you do that you know, don't. So that, that's the kind of, and that's fine with me. You know, that's fine with me. I, 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 I give opinions like that. I'll get on the phone with the doctor, give him an opinion. Right, right. Uh, no call, you know, I, I don't, I don't sure. you know, charge for that stuff. Unless I have to prepare contracts or something yep. like that. Yep. Um, and, and I'll get some physicians who want dosing and protocol because there's not, even at the A4M, there's some of that, but you have to really dig. Yeah. To, to yep. find guys that you trust that are, that are, that are doing that. Right. Um, so I've been a, I don't know, you've probably been a lab rat too. I've, I've been a guinea pig on of course. all this 
not all of it, there's 70, but a lot of these uh, uh, chemicals. I've, I've we, we, you and I would not be talking to each other right now here to this day if we were not kindred spirits, birds of a feather. I mean, as, as we talked about, you know, it, it, we're, the, the world, you know, to get our woo-woo content in here, the world is changing right now. And people of the similar energies and vibrations are all aligning and connecting. And that's why we actually even met each other two months ago. But no, you know, what I think, let me just say something about that. I think yeah. that the, there's a limiting, uh, this unquantified uh, limiting thing that people, that keeps them from connecting. Yeah like we're talking about, and that's their inability to articulate. They know it's there. Right. But they, they can't, it doesn't have a name. Yeah. It's ethereal. Right. And I think what you're doing is very important to name it. Right. To call these entities what they are. Right. To, to describe them historically, biblically. Right. right. And, but there's, so, there's very little of, of that, although most people are connected. Right. Connected in this way. Yeah. No, they are. I think it's the basis for this commonality that yeah. many humans share. Yeah, it's no, hard to describe what it is. It's hard to, so you have to give it a structure and a name. Yeah. And uh, I think that's one of the things you're, 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 you're doing. It's uh, um, really helping a lot of people that I've spoken to about Jay Campbell. Awesome. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, I appreciate a lot that. Of people that are following you, by the way, on your, on your trips to Peru and uh, there's a fascinating group that, that I know. Yeah, no, I, 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 so, so anyway, I'm glad you brought that up by the way. I appreciate it. Cause obviously the whole Jay Campbell experience is a lot different than the past TOT, you know, bro, you know, and obviously you're an optimization, bro. I'm an optimization. I don't bro. think most people are in the yellow either, Jay. I think they're down in the bed. <laughs> they're most. No. Yeah. I, that's what I mean. <laughs> but no, what, to what you're saying, like you said it best. That's why I was telling you that it was very profoundly said it best because most people are in fear, Paul. Yeah. You know, and when you're in that fear, you know, vibration, you know, everything. Cause you just said it, we all know everything. We've just chosen to forget. And, and until you can get out of fear. And again, there's so many things that keep us in fear, right? Like most people who are wage slaves and not entrepreneurs like you and me are a fear of something every day. They fucking yeah. clock in and clock out. Yeah. They show up, they have to do and follow the rules, Paul. They got to follow the rules. Yeah. Like you said, you like you and I, body, dude. It's, not, it's not like you and I don't have a fear too. It, it's the ability to manage it. It, or dismiss it right or look fear yeah, exactly it's there but you don't acknowledge it exactly it's a motivator too you can you you have to have the ability to use it faith as a motivator right take it and use it it's energy that's coming in you right. can't stop it because so many people are fearful exactly so use exactly. the energy right you know, trans you know transform it into something useful right um i guess that's what they call pma positive mental attitude yep. so I mean, it's, it's described in many terms, but I, I think that, that the more sophisticated you get yeah. in, the, in these papers and books that you're uh, writing are very helpful um, to people to uh, uh, get their hands around what it is they're experiencing. Sure. Call sure. it something and attach meaning to it right. because it, they can articulate what it is right. rather than just say, man, that was that deja vu? <laughs> was that me? <laughs> you know, what, Dude. That looked like me in that monkey we've all, suit. We've, all been was, there. we've all been there. It was so much easier to say, yeah, that's weird. I, 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 vaguely, I vaguely recall that happening to me. Yeah. I, so, said, so, I, I appreciate you saying all that. Um, it's awesome. Obviously, you and I are very, very closely connected. You know, I, I like to think that like people like you and I have probably lived past lives together, dude. You were probably my dad or I was your brother or some shit like that. I mean, who knows, right? But Yeah. So, well, as long as I wasn't your wife or girlfriend, we're good. Dude, you might have been. You, you'd have been my bitch, bro. Look, I look. I, I'll only go so far. I have to get an opinion. Dude, from I don't even comment. want to go after that. But that's awesome. All right. So listen, if somebody's watching this right now and they're like, "Man, that dude is a cool mf'er." How you know he's a physician, clinician? How do they? How what's the easiest way for them to connect with you? Um, by email, Paul at geneticshealth.com. Beautiful. Uh, that would be the easiest way. I mean, I. I uh, they're welcome to call me. Once that happens, they, they reach out to me. I give them my personal cell phone number. Um, and that's generally the way I communicate email, cell phone, because a lot of it is timeliness for sure. these physicians. They wait till they're procrastinators, man. You yeah. can do this with them. Um, they will wait. Uh, so a lot of times I'll get late at night phone call. Yeah, I got a problem. I got an inspector in the morning. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. uh, right. You know, Paul at geneticshealth.com. By the way, are you also a, um, invest, not, what is it? Not an investigative witness, but, uh, what kind of, uh, a, a, an evidentiary witness or a, 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 because you're an attorney, I mean, do you ever provide witness testimony or anything like that? Or is that just mostly the physicians? Or yeah, on a, for attorney's fees. In yeah. other words, attorneys, yeah. if they prevail, sometimes they're entitled to a fee. Sure. And they'll call a witness in and practices in that kind of area to right. testify that their fee is reasonable. Right. Um, but there's, there's not, uh, yeah, there's standard, there's uh, just as there's deviations in the standard of care for medicine claims, there's deviations in standards for attorneys. Right. And so there are attorney experts who testify against other attorneys. I have not, I have not done that. And then last question, um, do you, are you, can you practice pretty much anywhere? No, my, my license is in Florida. I, I also have a federal license in, in some of the federal district courts. Uh, but each state, I think there's there's some states that, that have re- what they call reciprocity. Right, exactly. In other words, your your license is good there. I don't I don't know maybe D.C. Which who the hell wants to practice there? And, and, and I mean, what kind of? No wonder it's they it's open borders. So you come on into D.C. I don't we don't care. A lot more than just humans in D.C. as we know. <laughs> There's, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, oh man, that's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. That's another podcast, bro. I'll bring you back. Uh, love to do it. Love to do it. Let me know when. Uh, oh, for sure. Absolutely. So, no, but Florida is my, my, uh, my, my, the state where I'm licensed. Cool. So, but I mean, if a doctor wants to consult with you, if any doctor wants to consult with you guys, yeah. they just pop you an email or a cell phone message and then you just, you, you, you set it up and you know, it yeah. goes from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get them all the, all the time. Awesome, dude. Well, listen, man, um, I'm going to shut this one down. This has been an amazing podcast. I truly been talking. appreciate uh, about an hour and four minutes, but it's good. Wow. I, mean, I, I normally go 45 to 60, but I mean, there was so much good stuff on this today, but um, I truly appreciate you. I appreciate your friendship. I mean, again, amazing podcast. And as all you guys know, um, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys next week. You guys know how to get a hold of Paul. It's paul at geneticshealth.com.